77. The past, the present and the future. Speaking and listening. The past. Listen. The Starship Explorer was returning to Earth after a 10-year exploration of the galaxy. The crew picked up an SOS call from a tiny, unidentified planet. The captain gave the order to answer the call, and they discovered its origin. It was in a narrow valley between two mountains. The starship landed safely at one end of the valley. The SOS call was coming from the other end of the valley. The captain, O'Hara, Spencer and six others left the explorer. They had reached the middle of the valley when an explosion made them turn round. The starship was in flames. In her recorded diary, the, ca the captain said, We had no idea how or why, and we still do not understand what happened. Listen. Twelve days after the explosion, the captain and the eight crew members were still alive. They had tried to return to the starship, but they had not been able to reach it. An avalanche had blocked the valley. So they had continued to the end of the valley, looking for the origin of the SOS call. They had not found it, and they had finally decided to make camp in a cave on the mountainside. They had been sheltering there for ten days when the captain recorded these words. Now, our life support systems are nearly exhausted. The only thing we know is that the end is not far away. Things could have been different, but nothing can change now. But the captain was wrong. The present. Listen. Things could have been different, but... Nothing can change now. It is very cold. The sky is dark. The mountains are beautiful. Captain. What is it, O'Hara? Listen. I'm listening, but I can't hear anything. Someone's coming. It's just the wind. You're imagining things. You've been listening to the wind for too long. Oh, maybe you're right. But I'm sure there's someone out there. Okay. Go and take a look. Spencer, go with O'Hara. Yes, Captain. The crew still believe that help is coming. After everything that's happened on this voyage, their optimism is wonderful. Captain, I was right. It's true, Captain. What did you see? A scout car from the ship, and it's coming this way. A scout car from the Explorer? That's impossible. Listen. Sergeant Gonzalez. Evening, Captain. We've been looking for you for more than a week. <sighs> We had to go around the mountains because of the avalanche. Are you okay? Yes, thank you, Gonzales. Everyone here is okay. But what's been happening? We saw the explorer in flames. Yes, Captain. There was an explosion and a fire, but we brought the fire under control. The ship is all right now, and we've located the origin of the SOS call. Human? No, Captain. Alien. But apparently friendly. A small creature, half plant and half animal. We've taken it on board the explorer. And the ship is not badly damaged? No, Captain. We've repaired the damage. The Explorer is now in good condition. Oh, okay. Well, this has been a long mission. I think it's time we went home. The future. Listen. What is our position, O'Hara? Sector 3, Captain. We'll be passing Jupiter in six hours' time. Condition of the ship, Spencer? All systems normal, Captain. Good. We'll be home soon. 
Captain. What is it, Gonzalez? We have a problem with the alien, Captain. It was in a storeroom on level five, but it's escaped. And Captain. Yes, Gonzalez? It's growing. It's already doubled its size. If it continues growing, it'll be as big as the ship in 24 hours. I see. Where are you? On level six, Captain. I think it's here somewhere. Yes, I can hear it. It's... Gonzalez? Gonzalez! Spencer, close all doors on level six. Yes, Captain. Maybe we won't be home as soon as I thought. O'Hara, full speed! All crew members, this is the captain. Emergency stations, I repeat, emergency stations. Song. SOS. The explorer had been touring the galaxy. It had completed an important mission. It was traveling home through Sector 3. The ship was in good condition. The captain said they'd be home before long. But then, something went wrong. trying to repair the damage, but now we have given up hope. The ship is floating out of control, and we know that we're alone. We will never see the Earth again, no, we don't want to believe This SOS will be too late by the time that you receive it. We'll have been floating for 15 days. We'll have left this sector far behind us. We'll be moving into deeper space where no one will ever find us. Fluency. Listen. Well, Francoise, what did you think of the Explorer story? It was quite interesting. So you didn't have any problems in understanding it? Oh, no, not really. There was one word I didn't quite understand. What was that? A scout car? Ah. I've never heard that word before. Uh, what does it mean? Scout car. Well... A scout car is a kind of small car, mm. or, or rather a kind of small vehicle, not really a car. Uh-huh. Um, a kind of small vehicle used by the crew of the starship mm -hmm. to travel over the surface of the planet, to explore the planet. Oh, I see. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, do you like science fiction? No, actually, I can't stand it. Oh. <laughs> uh, let me rephrase that. No, science fiction is not one of my favourite forms of literature. <laughs> <laughs> Listen and repeat. I think you misunderstood me. Let me rephrase what I said. Let me put it another way. What I really meant was... Special English Listen and write the numerical expressions. George Orwell was born in 1903 and died in 1950. His novel, Animal Farm, was published in 1945. Ghana has a population of 11 million. 
its land area is 238,538 square kilometres. The capital is Accra, population 850,000. The climate is hot, with temperatures between 24 degrees and 37 degrees Celsius. Canada has a population of 24 million. 66% of the population speak only English. 20% speak only French. 12% speak both languages. Central Park is a huge park in New York City, between 59th Street and 110th Street, and 5th Avenue and Central Park West. In Great Britain, the code for international telephone calls is 010. In an emergency, you dial 999. Game, set and match to Mr. McIntyre. 6-4, 6-2, 6-love. Synopsis. Dialogue. Well, Anna, have a good trip to the States. Yes, give my regards to Broadway. I will. Cheers. 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 <laughs> You'll miss my speech. Sorry? Uh, Mr. Jones has been asked to make another speech. At a conference about the future of the travel business. Well, I enjoyed your speech at the travel fair. It was very amusing. Oh, thank you. Uh, but this speech is a serious one. Mm. I've decided on the title. I'm going to call it... The travel business of tomorrow. <laughs> what do you think? It's fine. Ah. ah, you mean it's okay, but it's not very original. Well, that's true. It's not very original. But it's fine. And what I mean is, it's a very appropriate title. Yes, yes that's what I thought. I've been making some notes. I'm going to finish with a quotation. Um... Listen to this. <clears throat> and so, in conclusion, let me say this. There may be problems in the travel business, and we should think seriously about these problems. But we should not be discouraged. In the words of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. Hmm. That's a... A good quotation, but don't you think it's a bit grandiose? Grandiose? I think Anna's right. President Roosevelt wrote those words near the end of a war, and you're only making a speech about the travel business. Yes, maybe you're right. Um, I've got another quotation here. Um, tomorrow we will run faster. Uh, who wrote that? Um, F S F. T G G Chap Nine. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> what does that mean? Um, oh yes, F. Scott Fitzgerald, oh. the Great Gatsby, <laughs> <laughs> Chapter Nine. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm sure the speech will be fine, however you end it. Oh, look at the time. I have to go. Hmm. I haven't done my packing yet and I'm leaving in the morning. Here today and gone tomorrow. That's right. Bye. Bye. Bye.